One of the questions I get asked pretty regular here on YouTube is, would I milk cows if I could? And it's a uh, pretty common question, and I think it deserves its own video. So stay tuned for more. All right, guys, how we doing? I had an idea for this video. Um, we're gonna to kind of have a little fun here with this video. I'm gonna show you the dairy barn where they used to milk the cows up until 1980. I'm gonna show you what's here and what it would take um, to be able to milk cows here. Now, just as a disclaimer, <laughs> I understand that you don't need to be uh, top of the line or um, uh, totally be uh, set up right away your first year that you'd have to go to the bank loan uh, half a million dollars and uh, in a matter of uh, a year or so be completely set up and uh, ready to go um, my uncle's farm uh, great uncle's farm he has uh, robot milkers he has robots to push the feed into the cows and I completely and fully understand that that is many generations of work um, living within your means making good decisions um, having the uh, land base to support that kind of an operation and uh, I get it I'm not gonna say that I need to be that way in my lifetime even but uh, I'd like to uh, just kind of go through the barn here and show you what's here and uh, what some of the things it would take to be able to milk um, I'll go through a few things now um, I'm gonna talk about the cheap way as far as uh, what you could do just to get some cows in here and milking and also what should be done in the future um, as far as the final product how that should be to do it right to have things the right way so we're gonna get into it here I got the uh, lights on in the barn here um, the electrical is not the best but we got some of the lights on um, so it's not so dark so let's get to it and uh, go through this all right guys as you come in the door here to the uh, stable or the dairy barn where the cows used to be um, we'll come in here and you'll notice this cement block wall here on the left right when you walk in um, this is the milk house and the way they built this milk house, it's actually inside the bank barn um, with block wall construction. Um, it does a good job to help support the uh, ceiling up above. But what it doesn't have, and this would be something I would change and it wouldn't cost a fortune to change either. Um, it needs a door from the uh, cows to the milk house. Um, because if something goes wrong in the milk house while you're milking, you have to run all the way out through the door, go outside, and then come into the milk house. So I would try to get a door in this block building somewhere here. Um, it's not very expensive. You can cut through the block. I can do all that myself. It's just time. Get an opening into the milk house. The only thing is, and I'm pretty sure the regulations are still saying you need two doors to separate the cows from the milk. Um, for you dairy farmers, um, and that's who I'm hoping comments on this video the most. If you're a dairy farmer and you know the regulations, the last time I milked cows was 2003. So I'm out of it for uh, a little while now and I don't know what has changed since as far as the rules and regulations. You need two doors. So I'd have to figure out how to put a little extension on somewhere or something to be able to get in <laughs> to the milk house from the barn. I don't like that you have to go outside and all the way in. Um, so that's the, the first issue. Um, just as you walk in, um, you can't see the milk house or get to the milk house from the dairy barn. So number one, um, and as far as for the future, if money was no object, I'd do the same thing. Um, cheap way, expensive way. We need uh, better access to the milk house. So that's part one. All right, and as you come around here, you'll see the dairy stalls, all the uh, stanchions that are here. Um, we have this wooden gate. Um, I do know that the regulations are the stalls can't have any wood. Um, again, pretty cheap. If you needed a gate here, I don't know why they put a gate here. Um, looks like it was just tied shut with baler twine. It's on a spring. Um, maybe to uh, bring the cows in and out if you put them out on pasture so they don't get up here. Um, just get a metal pipe gate or even weld one up. Again, uh, cheap, I can do it. Uh, the materials are here, just time. So minor. <laughs> but as I wanna talk about these stalls, I think I uh, discussed this in past videos. As you come around here, you'll notice there are, in a, amidst all the junk, um, or antiques I should say, uh, there's two rows of stalls that you have here. One, two. 
Um, this is the main milking lane, the main center aisle. The cows are facing away. I like it that way. I've been in barns where the cows, their heads are together and their behinds are against the wall and it's a pretty messy barn that way. The sides of the barn are just coated with manure. I like this way and when you're milking, you can go on both sides up and down the rows. But these stalls, as far as milking today, I did say that they were solid yet. They are not rusted out. They are solid. Um, there's there's not going to be too much that's going to move these. Uh, they're galvanized. They are cemented into this feed gutter here. Um, and then there's three posts here that cement into the floor. And then uh, some of them are clamped to the support poles and some of them are into the ground. There are a couple here that have been modified and would need some work. Um, it's not just going to be a case of the stalls are fine and forget about them. Um, some of the uh, lower supports here have been cut out and there's wooden stalls mixed in where the metal ones have been removed. So that's an issue. You can't have any wood uh, making up your stalls. So the cheap way and the expensive way um, to just get cattle in here to milk, I would probably um, try to use the best stalls. Uh, start off just filling the stalls that I know are good um, and that are in good shape. Uh, I said we have these uh, chains here. They probably just need new chains. The anchor point is solid. I bet you the cow could yank on this and they would break the chain before the anchor point. So, uh, and as you get established and as you get milk in the tank and milk uh, to the uh, dairy, um, fix the stalls, replace the stalls, and slowly add more capacity. Um, I wouldn't want to start with uh, five or six cows that's going to be too small for a tractor trailer to come pick up the milk. You're going to have a tough time getting anybody to pick up milk from 10 or 15 cows. There are 39 stalls in this barn right now. It's not a lot, but there are 39 that are here and ready to go. Um, I would be all right maybe starting with 25. Uh, we had a dairy that uh, was here still milk and they were down to about 25 cows for a little while and they still got milk uh, picked up. So we'll start with 25. I'm thinking that the 25 is what is here in this center row. I think the other ones are over there. So as far as the stalls, I'd probably start filling them up, use the ones that are good. Um, now, for the future, again, if money is something that, uh, <laughs> if money was no object here, and I'm just dreaming here, and we're just having some fun, this isn't, uh, I'm not, I don't want to go wild here. I'm spending money I don't have. But what I would do probably in the future is get rid of these stalls completely. Um, get rid of these stalls and get the loop stall system that bolts and lags onto your curb here. Um, because it will give kind of a seamless feel to everything. The cows will have a little bit more room. You don't have to have them bolted to the support poles. You have a nice loop and it's all the way across. And the other thing is, um, for the future, even the cheap way I would look into this, the cow mattresses. We installed cow mattresses at the dairy I worked on. I really like them. Recycled tire rubber. Um, we did uh, quite a bit of the barn. They're so nice to keep the cows clean. Uh, the cows really enjoy them. Mattresses, the whole barn would uh, get mattresses and the loop stalls. Now the loop stalls, they range in price. And if you guys, the dairy farmers again, comment below. Um, if you've had any experience with the loop stalls that lag into the curb, um, as opposed to the old type stanchions that would come down and into the floor, um, you have that. I've seen cows get stuck in these already in the loops, uh, all kinds of stuff. The other reason for the loop stall is uh, I wanna get this front set of pipes. One of these was the vacuum line, one of them was a support line, and one of them was the water line. Um, when you clean the gutters in a system like this, you can't get in with a shovel or a broom real easy. Uh, it's going to be a pain cleaning the gutters every day. And the other thing, and this would probably be done regardless, it is nice here that they have it sloped here to help keep the feed in the trough um, that the cows can eat and they can't throw it out. Um, I don't like this uh, as far as, again, cleaning the gutters when it's summertime, when it's hot, and the cows are running the water bowls. Um, probably what I would try to do is get some cement, uh, pour this up a little bit, and then put the tile in like uh, is in the majority of stanchion barns. The tile's nice to clean. It's easy to sweep. And uh, yeah, you have to come in and push the feed back every so often, but 
you should be down in your barn regularly anyway checking on your cows. We would do periodic checks for manure to make sure they weren't laying on their manure clean. Uh, a couple times a day, just come in, go up and down the row, pull the manure off the beds. If they need some more bedding, throw some bedding under and sweep the feed. Um, I have no problem with doing that. Um, it is something you have to do every day, a couple times a day. Again, you should be in the barn with your cows and check on them periodically. It's not a case of just <laughs> feed them and then go off the whole day and then, no, I, I, I have no problem doing that. I don't like this system because I don't want them eating uh, spoiled feed, especially in the summertime. So a little bit on the stalls here. Um, it's gonna take pretty much money to uh, replace all of them. Uh, like I say, that's only if money was uh, here and it was doable. So, okay, we got gutters and stalls, let's move on. All right, as we come around to this feed alley, you'll notice these support poles here. There's even a bottle jack up there. And there's a support pole there, and there's a support pole there, and there's a support pole over there, and there, and there, and there, and there. Anyway, you get the picture. This barn has structural issues that need to be addressed and should be addressed, uh, whether it's a dairy or not. If it's just here for storage, this barn needs some work or it's gonna fall down. <laughs> it's pure, it's plain and simple. What happened is, these poles here, these steel poles that are into the floor, they cemented them into the floor. They weren't filled with concrete. They're hollow and the bottoms rusted off on quite a few of them, not all of them, but quite a few of them. These poles here have to be replaced. They have to be cut out new poles put in to support the barn. Again, that's a little bit of expense. It depends. I don't know as far as what's here as far as pipes. You could probably get some pipes and do it yourself fairly cheap if you went to some uh, aftermarket supply surplus type of place that would have that diameter of pipe. And you could weld. I've done it. You could weld plates on the top, lag them in. I've done it many times over at, my, at the other farm. Um, fix the support members. Um, as far as the wood... It should be okay. There's a couple places. You see they have I-beam right there. That's a good thing to do. Uh, a couple places should have some I-beam to help support this floor. Um, the top was too overloaded with hay and straw the one year, and it made a clunk while they were putting hay away, and some of these poles were buckling down in the bottom. These here are just helping to support things. Um, and again, this wall... <laughs> this wall is pitched out pretty hard. Um, I'm going to get into that real quick here, and uh, this is where everybody's probably going to laugh and scratch their head and say I'm dreaming and uh, just spending all kinds of money that isn't here. But this would be something for years and years and years down the road. I'm talking, I don't know, 30, 40 years down the road. So let's get into that.